saying that data is final is what without the business case without the jury. just not knowing what questions to ask and it would take me longer to complete projects what is up everyone i hope you all are doing well so in today's video we're going to be talking about mistakes that i've made as a beginner data analyst now nobody's perfect we're all making mistakes at some point or another but let's just talk about mistakes i've made so hopefully you won't make them as you enter a data analytics role so first and foremost the number one mistake i made when i got into data analytics is saying that data is final i later learned data is never final we use final lightly in the data analytics world because things happen things change and data can be wrong case in point recently we've been presenting data in a dashboard however there are some changes that happened in the business we were not made aware of those changes so the data that we've been presenting for the last six months it is wrong because of those changes so therefore we have to go in and update the code restate the dashboard data so that means that anyone that has used that dashboard to present these numbers and presented them as final, that data is incorrect. So never say the data is final. It is final, but please keep in mind that you can change at any moment in time for any reason. Another example of this is that one of our servers was not updating correctly. So again, the data was incorrect. We had to go back and restate data. It was restated to January of the year, but any of the data beyond that, it isn't, we know it's incorrect, but the data's not right. So we can't say like that's finalized, who we will never know beyond the beginning of the year what it's gonna be because it's just too much time, effort, and money to go back and restate anything beyond this year for results that have already been reported out on, just not gonna do it, but for current year, did restate it, but again, anyone that had reported out on any of those numbers until that issue was corrected, reported out on inaccurate data. This happens a lot, so I learned pretty early on not to use the term final. It will come to bite you in the butt. Just final, okay? So the second mistake that I made as a data analyst is not asking questions. So when I first started in this role, you get these requests from clients it, or your, you know, your Jagger tickets or however, whatever method you use to manage your work, um, getting the request and just not knowing what questions to ask. And this is something that may come along with time, but not asking questions because if you're not clarifying what it is that your client or your stakeholder wants, you could be presenting them with the wrong data or wrong information or something not in the way they need it. And then you're having to go back and redo all of that work once you present it to them and they're like, no, I wanted this or no, we needed to display this. You're going have, you're having to go back and edit all of that work that you did and redo it. So asking questions, asking clarifying questions as well. So if they put in a ticket that they need performance for a particular result, clarify, okay, is this, for a, is this going to be for a specific time frame, for a specific work group or product or service, whatever the case may be. Ask just some general questions and that may lead them to provide you with some answers that make you have additional questions that you need to clarify. And just starting that conversation and asking questions so that you can get them a more final or a, you know better product and you're able to answer their questions and address the problems that they have in a more efficient way. Again, this is something that I struggled with and even, well, I guess now I have a lot of questions actually. I, I ask too many questions probably today, but that is a part of the job. Like you are trying to find an answer or you're trying to solve problems and that does require you to ask a lot of questions, but again, something that may come with time, but just try to get in the habit of asking clarifying questions. And you'll learn what, what are the right questions to ask as you go along in your career. The next mistake I made as a beginner data analyst was not documenting my work. 
You guys, when I tell you, document your work, save your work, categorize it in a folder, use GitHub, do something to document your work. Because Friday, just two days ago, someone came to me, hey, so-and-so said that you worked on this project and I want to know if you can share your code. And I'm just like, what? I worked on what? Like you do so many projects, you forget about it. But you need to make sure that you are documenting and saving your work. And then also when you are writing your code or doing your like your SQL, make sure you're commenting out sections of the code that says you're doing X, Y, and Z here. And this is why, because someone, if you need to share your code with someone else, they may not need it for that purpose. They may need it for another reason, but comment it out what you're doing. So they have that little general explanation as to what the code is doing for you. Now, in this situation on Friday, I did not recall working on this project, but luckily I did have it saved. I had my sections commented out. I was just able to do a quick search in my folder for one of the keywords in that project. And I was like, oh, did work on that. Here you go, shared it with them, they were good, okay? So document your work because you never know when someone's gonna come and ask you for data on a project that you worked on or you need to share your code or you need to rerun and update this project. You just never know. So the next mistake I made as a beginner data analyst was working on a project without a business case, without a JIRA ticket. Someone would, or I would have clients or stakeholders reach out to me via, um, via Slack, just send me a Slack message and they'd be like, hey, can you pull data on X, Y, and Z? Or we need to make changes of X, Y, and Z. And there's no documentation. So you have no paper trail. Like you have no, you have nothing in an official system that's saying, hey, I need this work doing, I need this work done. We have this funding approved or we have this leader or director, or whoever, the sponsor for this particular project. You don't have any of that documented anywhere for you. So I began working on this project, doing the analytics, getting a dashboard together, and then it comes back with from the team, other people on this same team, like, why did you do this? Why did you change that? Why? Did, I had no leg to stand on. You know, I had nothing as to, I was just doing the work and I shouldn't have been doing it because I didn't have a ticket for the work I didn't have any documentation and none of the other people in the team were aware. And when they found out about it, they wanted all these changes. So have the work documented, have a paper trail so it can go back and say, okay, this person requested it. This is why I made this change. This is why I made this update because instead of other people coming to you, questioning you, send them to the ticket, send them back to the original requester. They can have that conversation because it's not necessarily like I did anything wrong. I did per the request, but again, wasn't approved, wasn't documented clearly. So that was definitely a mistake on my end and something I've learned not to begin work before it's in a ticket, okay? Or whatever system or process you use, I don't do the work until it's in the system. No matter how much I wanna get a head start on it, I'm just not gonna do it because I've been burned one too many times. I've learned my lesson, all right. And the last mistake I've made as a data analyst is being afraid to ask for help. So this is kind of like, I, I, I struggle with this because I am a big proponent of, hey, if you can go and find the answer, go and you know be independent, try and find the information first. But I got stuck in that so hard that I would never reach out and ask people for help. So it became an issue because I would just be spending so much time researching, trying to figure out how to do something and I'm not finding the answers where I could have reached out to a coworker and got the answers. Now, this is not me saying don't try to do it on your own first because again, big proponent of trying to do it on your own because I find that I remember those things. I remember how to do them a lot more than someone else doing it for me or watching someone else do it. Like I learn better when I'm actually doing the work. So I would 
just get in this habit of not asking anyone for help and it would take me longer to complete projects that are due and it became a problem. So I would say like if you've spent some time or if you've gone, you've looked, you can't find the answer, don't be afraid to ask for help. Like don't be afraid to ask your manager or your coworkers for help with something like you can explain to them, I've tried X, Y, and Z, and I'm still not getting this to work right. And they can probably look at it with you, help you through it. Like we all need help at some time or another, but I just don't want people to be afraid to ask for help. But I think a lot of people are more willing to help you when you're like, okay, so this is my problem. I've tried X, Y, and Z. This is what's happening when I do those things. It's not giving me back. This is what I want can you help me? I think a lot of people are more willing to help when they've seen you've tried everything opposed to you not trying anything and just saying, hey, can you help me do this? I think more people would be more willing to help if, you know, you've tried, didn't get it, now you need help. So, so those are some of the things that I've struggled with in the beginning of my data analytics career. Some of those mistakes that I've made that I hope will help you out so that you're not making them. But that is going to be it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Please comment down below if any mistakes that you've made in data analytics. I can't wait to hear back what you guys have done because it's probably some things that I have some mistakes that I've made and struggled with as well. So. Comment below and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.